The arguments are set in two different ways. The arguments are being set in two different ways between two other uh, major recording artists. One is Taylor Swift versus Beyonce. Some would argue, some people, some people would argue that Beyonce is a better, bigger artist, more sales, more streams, more tickets sold. She's selling out like $25,000 seats on stage at her concert in some cities. Like Beyonce is bigger, better, more amazing in any way. And all those people would be wrong. So look, I'm not denying Beyonce is great. I'm not denying she's talented. I'm not denying she's a successful artist. I'm not denying that her worldwide stadium tour isn't going to make a billion. Okay. Beyonce is just as, if not a little less powerful than Taylor Swift. Okay. It's almost as big as Taylor, but not quite. And like, let's just state the obvious. Okay. Has there been, has there been a mile and a half long lines three days before the concert just for merch sales for Beyonce's concerts? Maybe, but I haven't seen articles about it. Okay. And would Beyonce, in my personal opinion, would Beyonce be as big as she is without the help of Jay-Z? If it wasn't for Jay-Z, would Beyonce be as big? Think about it. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just putting some facts out there. I think Jay-Z has a very, very big percentage to do with Beyonce's success. Now, Taylor doesn't have a Jay-Z behind her, so there would lie in maybe a little bit more of an argument, okay? I mean, like, let's be honest. Like, let's be honest. The only news, the only news that I've heard from the Beyonce tour the only headlines, the only headlines I've seen from the Beyonce tour is the fact that she has her own toilet seats. Beyonce has a whole crate full of brand new toilet seats because listen, honestly, it's smart and it makes sense because she can't be bothered. And why would she disgusting sit on a toilet seat that someone else who makes less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, probably, or maybe like a different, another celebrity who makes like a million a year. Ew, gross. Why would she sit on a toilet seat that someone else has sat on? So her crew rolls around from city to city to city with boxes and stacks and crates of just brand new toilet seats. And I mean, why not? Why not? Like, what's the toilet seat budget? Like 80 grand? Like toilet seats cost, what, 40 bucks a seat? They probably do 100 shows times 100 cities with 100 different nights, maybe 300 times 40 bucks. Literally, they're only spending like literally probably less than 10 grand on toilet seats for the whole tour. So why not? Why not do it? You know what I mean? Like that's what I hear from the Beyonce tour side of things. And on Taylor's side of the thing, uh, we're giving out $100,000 cash bonuses to all of our truck drivers. We're giving out, you know, uh, 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 tickets and $100,000 bonuses to everyone who worked on the Taylor Swift tour. Uh, you know, but and Beyonce is handing out toilet seats. Listen, I'm not saying Beyonce isn't, you know, doing stuff for the community. I'm not saying she's pushing the economy forward. I'm not saying she's not, you know, making things happen with the money she's making on her tour because I'm sure she is. But all I'm saying is from the outside looking in, it seems like Taylor Swift might be doing a bigger and better job. So, I mean, like, just other than that, I mean, other than that, look, Taylor Swift and Beyonce are queens in their own right. They're queens in their own lane. I think we could even probably, probably categorize Beyonce's music in a different genre than Taylor's. So, you know, they're queens in their own right. But additionally, the next argument then becomes Taylor Swift versus Michael Jackson. Okay? RIP to the king, but... You know, Michael Jackson is, and arguably in pretty much most of people's opinions, the number one artist of forever of all time, at least up until now. Uh, I think, you know, listen, my opinions on Michael versus Taylor, January of this year, uh, Michael had it. Michael Jackson was the top. Michael Jackson had the numbers. Michael Jackson had the tours. Michael Jackson had the music, the singles, the albums, everything, the mobs, the, the, the fans following him, the concerts, the sold out shows, the sold out arenas. Jackson took it every single time. 
until we kicked off the Eras Tour. The day we kicked off the Eras Tour and the numbers started coming in and we started seeing how insane this was, I strongly believe that Taylor Swift has surpassed Michael Jackson in societal relevance, influence on and off the internet. And let's, I, let's just, I mean, let's call it what it is. Jackson didn't have the internet. They did a little bit, kind of, sort of, but Jackson didn't have what it took to go viral on the internet video after video, after song, after stream, after Spotify, after album, after record, after deal, after world record, after sale, after sale. Taylor Swift, I think, now has surpassed Michael Jackson. I mean, like, look at the hits. The hits are comparable, okay? If you take all of the hits from, like, Jackson 5 all the way through Michael Jackson's solo career, the entire Thriller album is a hit, like, everything Michael Jackson did went gold, silver, platinum, whatever, billboard charts, number one. The man was unstoppable when it came to music, okay? Up until like the last of it, up until his last song that he dropped, up until his death, Michael Jackson smashed every record, every chart, every number. And now Taylor's doing the same thing. Listen, it, you can't, like you can't even, the, the woman can't even get a night off. She can't even get a night off without without a fucking without a flash mob of people. Taylor Swift can't even have a Thursday night off to go to like one of her good friends, uh, you know, like wedding rehearsal dinners where she just listen. She just wants a little themed cocktail named after the couple's dog with a little bit of vodka and a lot of fruit juice in it, and eat a little fucking hors d'oeuvre, like a little mini fucking crab cake at the wedding rehearsal dinner of one of her really good friends. She just wants to have a good time, a few hours away from it all, just a little bit of normalcy, and she shows up to the restaurant, and 20 minutes later, it's chaos. There's people everywhere and people who weren't invited to the wedding rehearsal. It was absolute chaos outside the superstar uh, producer Jack Antonoff and actor Margaret Qualey's rehearsal dinner after diehard fans caught wind of Taylor Swift being in attendance. Listen, let's be honest. Superstar producer Jack Antonoff and actor Margaret Qualey Something tells me you weren't going to have flash mobs outside of the restaurant if Taylor didn't show up. Sorry, you're both superstars in your own right, I'm sure, but like you weren't mm, this level, I don't think. On Friday night, fans gathered in droves outside of Black Whale Bar and Fish House in Long Beach Island, New Jersey, where the star set of rehearsal dinner was taking place. Video footage from the Jersey Shore area restaurant showed hordes of people gathering outside, hoping to just get a glimpse of Taylor Swift. The police were eventually called and were attempting to maintain the crowd as seen in the footage. I mean, look at the video, dude. I look, it's, 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 what, what do you think these people were expecting on this Wednesday night wedding rehearsal dinner? Yes, celebrities were there. Taylor Swift was there. And that's what they thought they were going to get. A glimpse, a glimpse, a glimpse, a glimpse from far away of Taylor Swift a glimpse of her just to see her walk out of the street into a, a tinted all black SUV. A glimpse is what they hoped for. Like half of these people, literally half these people went there thinking, holy shit, I'm either going to get a photo with Taylor. We're going to get a mini concert from Taylor. Taylor's probably going to hand out hundred thousand dollar bonuses to all of us who showed up at the restaurant. Like they literally thought this was a Kai Sinet from Twitch, New York City PS5 giveaway. Like, what did you think would happen when you showed up to the same restaurant Taylor Swift did? What did you think would happen? They would say, oh, Mr. Levi, walk right on up. Here's a table for you. Here's a table for four right next to Taylor. If you could do us a favor, don't bother her and just let us know. If you could keep it hush, hush that she's here. Here's your seat right next to Taylor. Here's a menu. Can I bring some waters to the table? Fuck no. You're not getting in. What did you think would happen when you went to the same restaurant as Taylor Swift? 
You think she would just break out a Bluetooth speaker out of the back of one of the SUVs with a wireless microphone and sing like Shake It Off, Love Story, and a few other songs for you and then go home? Like I, something, something like that you are just, some people, the Swifties sometimes, listen, we've got to start thinking rationally about this, guys. We've got to start thinking rationally about Taylor Swift and, you know, what we do when she's in certain places. Because this is just, this will inevitably drive her to Michael Jackson. Listen, Michael Jackson couldn't go to the grocery store. Taylor Swift can't go get a chicken Parmesan, let alone the grocery store, let alone, you know, to get an ice cream cone without mobs of people endangering her very life. So it's like, she's obviously at Michael Jackson level. She's obviously surpassed Beyonce. She has now reached a new level of like dumbfound all-star freedom, all-star freedom, all-star celebrity status. Like she has made that celebrity status gone to the next level and no one's close. No one living is close to Taylor Swift.